was a, it was a, it was a good sized heart attack. The ENG looked like a seismograph. The lines were going in all wrong directions. Uh, and then when I was actually told I was having a heart attack, I, I literally recall saying to myself, well, that's good. I'm in the right place. <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll fix this. We'll, we'll, we'll be fine. And uh, I, I don't take a lighthearted approach to it. But as a patient, there is a, there is a level of denial that goes into the fact that you, you were close to, in, to, to dying. So a good, healthy heart, I've discovered, beats roughly 100,000 times a day. You live until you're about 70, that's two and a half billion times, which is really a lot of work for, for one muscle. I mean, a lot of work. And in college and soon after college, I, uh, I gave my heart a pretty nice break. I didn't push it too hard. I fed it really well if you're into the fast foods and the fried foods and, and most things that weren't good for it. You, you, you throw in a job that requires late hours, little sleep, uh, genetics, which you throw into the mix. We really had a good recipe for a heart attack. And yet, you come to learn that there was so much that could have been done to avoid it. And what I learned is through education, eating right, exercising, eliminating some stress or as much as possible, you can kind of create your own environment for a healthy heart. But it, it takes effort, it takes energy, it takes a commitment to actually want to live. And then there's going to be a little selfishness that, that, that you convince yourself you're worthy of living. That there's a reason that this investment is, is going to be worth it. And modern medicine that, that Jim talked about and Dr. Liang's talked about it has changed everything. I mean, I remember as a little boy visiting my grandfather at the Beth Israel Hospital in Brookline after he had a second heart attack. And he was in the hospital for what felt like months. Truth was, it was weeks. And the fact is, I was discharged one day after a heart attack. And now you've got stents and you've got statins and drugs to combat high blood pressure and low blood pressure and EKGs and ECTs and EBCTs and arteriography and CT scans and MRs. How's that? And all those things are out there. <laughs> and there are a number of, of uh, weapons, in a sense, that, that these innovative and dedicated and talented doctors and nurses have to work with. You would think that heart, heart disease and heart attacks would be a thing of the past, but that's, that's just not the case. And, and I cringe when I see on television those commercials where, where, where the guy gets into the truck and he looks at his pal and says, Phew, doctor told me my cholesterol was really high. And the guy next to him says, yeah, you need to take this. And then like a month later, he gets back in the truck and says to the same guy, wow, you know, it, it worked. And, and that's just not, not how it goes. I mean, the medicine is one thing. Uh, but the really fine print on that commercial also says that's in conjunction with uh, a proper diet and exercise. For those like me who've suffered a heart attack and truly feel like there's almost been a benefit because you've learned from that experience, as well as those who haven't had to deal with that painful lesson, please also note that red wine and dark chocolate are, are not alone the answer. <laughs> I do love cake bread tab. If anybody, I mean, that's, if you want to have some red wine, that's, that's a real good one. Uh, but the answer truthfully comes in a combination of factors, all of which I've already kind of mentioned here. A commitment to a healthy lifestyle with, with the very real ability, and, I, and I've come to learn over time that, that it's important that you, in a sense, forgive yourself for having an occasional slice of pizza. Uh, those of us who have dealt with, with heart attacks tend to beat ourselves up when we, in a sense, fall off the wagon, and, and you can't do that. Um, I can't speak for all the heart attack survivors out there, but I certainly have shared enough time with them to know that, that a lot of us do walk around wondering when and if, and, and pardon the pun here, you know, that sort of ticking time device in our chest is going to, going to explode again. And it's sad, but it's, that's one of the harsh realities of, of, of suffering a heart attack. And in sports, we often hear, uh, as the season winds down, now you, all you have to do is watch baseball at the Sports Center, uh, and there's a player or a coach or a manager who comes out and says, well, we control our own destiny. And for somebody in my case, you, like, no, actually you don't control your own destiny. I mean, destiny by its very definition is predetermined. What we do control, though, are the factors which go into affecting our destiny. A heart, you can't see it. You, know, you, can't, you can't reach in there and feel it. Somebody breaks a bone, and we can all see where the break is. A.J. Price tears a, uh, an ACL. Uh, we, we can hear it tear. I've torn mine. I've heard it. You know that happened. Uh, 
Uh, we can see bumps and bruises, but without technology, all we can do is really trust ourselves to take care of our hearts. And I have said, and Dr. Shulman will, will vouch, I've said countless times, and he insists I'm as healthy as some of the guys that the coach has running up and down his floor. I said, you've got to get me inside. You've got to let me see the healthy heart. Uh, let me see the arteries that are clear, because remember, most heart attack survivors, we never expected to have a heart attack in the first place. E even a doctor's reassurance that the future appears full of great promise is balanced by the fact that we, as survivors, live with a real, palpable sense of vulnerability. So in, in the end, from this patient's perspective, it, it comes down to trust. I mean, that's, that's ultimately what, what it's all about, is trusting yourself to be accountable for the way that you, you treat your heart, believing and trusting in the ultra-talented and gifted men and women who save lives at this incredible facility every day, knowing that every dollar counts the same way that every second does after a heart attack. Earlier I talked about the ease to success. I mentioned educating yourself, eating right, exercising, eliminating stress to the degree to which it can be. The last two E's on my list are executing a game plan and extending yourself, which is what the coach talked about, giving back. So once again, I certainly uh, have a unique perspective to say thank you to all those that are here. Certainly a special thanks to Pat and Jim Calhoun who make this center possible. Uh, I live for this place and I live because of this place. So thank you.